October 2003 in West Meath, a tranquil county and footballing backwater, but that's about to change. The new manager of the West Meath football team, Paddy O'Shea. Paddy O'Shea has won 10 All-Irelands as player and manager. West Meath have never won anything at senior level. They make an odd and interesting couple. But Paddy's mind is still on an old love. The previous week, Paddy was sacked from the Kerry manager's job. At home in Ventry, he's hurting badly, feeling bemused by his dismissal. If you're somebody that the last thing I think about before going to bed is football and Kerry, and the first thing I think about in the morning when I wake up is football and Kerry, and that I've been doing that since I knew what a football looked like. Nothing meant more to me and the green and gold. It's no major secret. I certainly heard the news second hand. Dúr pan lum, gudúr pan le. It hurt me immensely, you know. I possibly felt that I was going to go away quietly. Give him enough time now and he'll, he'll walk the plank, but... No, no. In actual fact, my... My own wife and family said, uh, make them fire you. Of course I have made mistakes. Calling Kerry supporters, was it fucking animals or something. What I meant was that there were high achievers in Kerry that they were animals to satisfy because they wanted their team in Croke Park every year. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, that's a compliment. That's a compliment. I have made mistakes, and I'll admit that I have made mistakes. Will they admit that they made a mistake, and will they admit that they handled their business untidily? I didn't hear any of them admitting it yet, and you know. And you won't either. I didn't give any major thought to training another team, to be honest. I gave them with me job, no major thought. The ideal situation for me was when I was finished with management in Kerry was to bow out totally and, and not get involved in any managerial work anymore, maybe concentrate a little bit of my time and my family and my business. But again, in, in the manner in which it happened, all of a sudden, out of the blue, that's possibly how I... I said I'd better hang on to something for my sanity. A sharp-suited bank manager, Tommaso Flaherty, seems an unlikely sidekick for a straight-talking publican. But for Pawdy, he's the obvious choice as trainer. They go back a long way. I remember the first time that, uh, that I saw him, it was about nine, I would say, eight or nine at the time, and I don't know how I got into Dingle <clears> the <throat> certain evening, but I remember people were talking about um, this, this young lad playing left corner back, and he had the jersey outside the togs, and he had the white collar up, a red jersey, and I don't think there was numbers on the jerseys even. And that was, that was the P.O. Sure, he, he was on to me every, every five minutes about going to Westmeath, and um, I eventually gave in. That's it, go down in the ball, let's go and spill it. Go on, Russell, again. Go again, Russell, go again, Russell. Rory, no fucking news, pulling a jersey. Come on, down the unit. These days, championship preparations begin long before a ball is kicked. The dynamic duo begin working with their new team, knowing the National League will test Westmead's early progress. In March, for the first time in Pawdy's life, 
Kerry are the opposition. Unknown to an awful lot of people, uh, yesterday was, apart from bereavement now and other situations, probably the hardest day of my life. Other people can apply themselves differently, uh, who go on and manage other teams. But for me yesterday, personally, my mind doesn't at all. I, I was a West Meat man yesterday, don't put her like it. Kerry are too good for Westmeath. So are most other teams in Division 1. The Hacks and even some fans are losing faith in the Messiah already. Word is that Pawdy could become an OBE out by Easter. These are dark days. His job is on the line. We got a run of bad games where we, we, we were coming out second best. And uh, rumours started filtering there, then about my non-attendance and training. It was very, very difficult for me, I must admit. No, it was very difficult to travel and overnighting and different things. There's a certain percentage within me that I keep to myself. I'll never tell anybody. After games, I wasn't, uh, you know, I didn't have my meal with the players, or I was keeping my distance, and I think that put an extra strain on them. It took me a bit of time just to get my head around it and to get really tuned in. I wasn't going up to Westmeath just to fill in a a bit of time, a bit of space in my life. They're playing Division One football. They have won minor All Irelands. They've won one of twenty-one championships. So I mean that that is a, a that is football there. Westmeath win just one league game, their last one, but it saves them from relegation. Bruised and battered. They regroup at Inchidani Beach in West Cork, digging deep within themselves to find the strength needed for coming challenges. I always get clued in for championship. Because the wire says well, I get clued in when the cuckoo comes around, but hopefully I'll be around with the team longer than, than the cuckoo this year. Can you hear me now? Lord, can you hear me now? Lord, can you hear me now? Back in Westmeath, it's the week before the first round championship game against neighbours Offaly. On the border, 92-year-old Joe Fox is in his eighth decade following the team. It's been a thankless task, but the excitement doesn't lessen with the years. I saw Westmead playing in the first round of the Leinster Championship in 1930. We were beaten, of course, naturally. Counties would, would, would a smaller population, such as Charles and Longford, won't all right, but we never... Uh, we were afraid to get hurt. <laughs> I was often in a crowd and some talk would come around about football, you know, the sort of way. And I'd be ashamed to say that I was from Westmead. We were a kind of a laughing stock. The last time to beat Huffley, 1949. 1949. They beat them in a replay in Mullingar. They drew, in, they drew in to the moor and they beat them in a replay in the moor in Mullingar. That's the last time, yeah. They were a bogey team. Offaly is a bogey team to Westmead. If Westmead is beaten, I'll be in very, very bad humour. I'm a bad loser. Hope springs eternal in the human breast. Who's this Tennyson said that? Hope springs eternal in the human breast. Across the border, Tullamore Barber and former Offaly player Noel McGee has no fear of Westmead. We were in the doldrums ourselves for a, a long time. And then when 
the footballers broke through in 1970 then, like, you know, they won, won a few after that, like, you know, and had great success since then. But uh, same thing could happen with Westmead. Here this morning, all oh, the first 20 customers, was 12 from Westmead. We all um, get involved in it and there's great banter and good, honest to God, local rivalry, like, you know, there's nobody going to fight about it at the end of the day, you know, but... You'll take <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether they're all that happy over there with party at present, like, you know, but then again, like, you know, he's only there for six months or that, like, you know, so he has a lot to prove yet, like, you know, but they, they haven't had any great benefits from him so far. But, you know, you know, after the game, he could be a hero. Or else he could be back down his entry. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Championship is where you prove what you're made of. In Croke Park, the Westmeath team carry the hopes of an entire county. Every time that you go into the stadium, you get this feeling of, oh, I don't know what it is, you know, it's, it's you, you get this kind of a buzz or whatever, you know. It's a magnificent stadium. If you're going in there for the first time, you can be, become very much overawed by it. I, I'll be focused and we'll all be focused, hopefully, and, and uh, as I say, look, we have left no stone unturned. After all the hard work of winter and spring, the moment of truth has finally arrived. Westmead have not beaten Offaly for 55 years. Is this to be the day? Pawdy, the man who kept them in Division 1, looking to secure victory. A shot, let's see, firing it down. Controlled well by Morley. And he goes to Glory and kicks it over the bar. Brian Morley's first shot on the target. James Grennan got a great point at the lead decider. But he fists it instead quite wisely and puts it over. And there's an offer player down injured. It's Pascal Keelhan. Team Doctor in straight away. And the referee has issued. A red card, it's Rory O'Connell who's been red carded. Westmead are down to 14 men, and win or lose, O'Connell, their only all-star, will face a 12-week ban. The season hangs in the balance. Now's the time to get in the, now's the, time to get in the fucking box again. throwing a share of the old fitters over to me and, and this and that, but I'll be honest with you, an awful lot of groundwork has been done in Westmeath ever before I got involved here at Moss Flaherty or Eddie Collins or Jack Spooney. An awful lot of groundwork has been done. Once the pressure wasn't so much on you as a manager as you experienced in Kerry, and maybe it was all the other side. I don't know when last there wasn't pressure on me. <laughs> <laughs> Stop that! <laughs> The week after the Offaly game, local radio commentator Ned Flynn is trying to pass the torch to the next generation of Westmeath footballers. We've got Colin, you have lots of work to do to get these fellas into footballers. 
The road to Croke Park starts here. Tackle, tackle, tackle! Take it off. Oh, they're not supposed to give it back to her. Lads, who's out here marking this girl? Well, I'm asked off, lad. Mickey Murray, are you afraid of this, lassie? It has become a babysitting service. You nominate the place where the game is or the training is, and the parents will drop them there and disappear. Back to the shopping if it's a Sunday morning and come back and collect them. And then you were left there uh, hoping and minding them and watching them. To go off a corner forward no matter who's playing bad. Mickey! 43 hops! Years ago when people had no money, they seemed to have plenty of time and they could come and bring their cars to matches, help you out. Nowadays we have plenty of money, but apparently no time. I suppose if you take a look at people who commute from here to Dublin, leave 7 o'clock in the morning, back 7 or 8 o'clock at night, the last thing they want to do is go off to a bunch of screeching children looking after under 12s. You know, what they want to do is go to bed and get ready for the next day. I don't know will the will the aspect of volunteerism become any better, because if it doesn't, it's going to be putting the same uh, load on the few people. At the end of the day, really, Westmead's only won one league game, and uh, we have won the one championship game. I suppose it is an advancement. But I feel that for Westmead to say they have improved, they would have to beat Dublin on Sunday, so I've got to the next level. Now, you have to try and pick it up properly, because it's not soccer you're playing. It is Gaelic football. The road and flight paths between Ventry and Mullingar have become familiar to Paddy. He leaves home at noon and returns at midnight. But the distance between Kerry and Westmeath is as much historical as geographical. Westmeath have never won a Leinster Championship. Kerry can win a Munster Championship this year and it'll be forgotten about by Tuesday. They're not talking about Munster Championships in Kerry anymore. They're talking about all Ireland. The difference between that and Westmead is that if Westmead won the Leinster Championship, it would be nearly as good to them as in Hall Island. The manager's head won't be in the clouds because of one victory. Dublin await, and they pose a new set of problems. They will have to approach the Dublin game the next in a, in a totally different way than they approach the Offaly game. You have a team the next day now who are probably the most physical team in the country and we have to, to meet that challenge. How are you? Day in the park, mate. Okay, we're sure you will. Hundreds of miles from home, marooned in Westmeath, Pawdy could easily feel isolated. Luckily, he can count on Tomas, somebody who knows where he's coming from. The Kerry Gaelic of Valley Ferret, when we were growing up, we had nothing else uh, but Gaelic football there. There was no hurling there, there was no soccer there, no greyhound racing or horse racing or anything. The two of us, we probably think about football the same way and we see the same things in certain players. We had a trial game one night and there was one fella, he was playing quite well and I, I didn't say anything to Pawdy for a while because I knew what his reaction would be. He was still playing well in the second half and I said, here goes, I'll go anyway, I know he'll, he'll roar at me. So um, I said to him, Pawdy, that player there, he's playing, he's playing fairly well. Ah, he is, but Jesus, sure he's wearing a pair of white boots. When did you ever see a pair of white boots any use? And I knew that was the thing he was going to say to me. It was far from white boots Paddy was reared, but he's been moving up in the world ever since. There's no doubt about it that politicians are the biggest manipulators that can come across. No doubt about that. On election day, you see the politicians and their tallymen and uh, their supporters and see the, how they operate and all that. There's no doubt about it. Whether, whether you're going badly or going well, there is an, an, a major buzz in it. The fact that I know so many politicians, I think, hasn't done me any harm from the point of view of dealing with people and players.
back in the Midlands, Joe Fallon, once a regular in the team, is in danger of being cast adrift from the first 15. Well, I suppose the big thing on everyone's mind tonight is the actual name of the team, even though in our own minds we'd have a fair idea that maybe one or two positions possibly up for contention. From my own point of view, at this stage I wouldn't expect to be starting given the way training has been lined out, but I'd certainly be hoping to play a part at some stage on Sunday. We happened to go up to Croke Park just to have a look around at it again for one or two of the lads that haven't played there before. And I think when you step inside the, you know, the gates and when you step out onto the field, you, know, the, you realise how much you would love to be actually winning something there at senior level. Um, so I suppose that's what kind of keeps you going, it's what makes it worthwhile. I suppose it's only natural that you're going to be a small bit nervous. I have seen players even before getting sick or whatever in dressing rooms. You're asking too much to go out on a field if you're going to be that nervous then because you're going to be thinking about too much, I suppose, about what you're going to do when you get the ball. You have to just, I suppose, cope with the, the nerves and just try and turn them to your advantage. Joe's intuition is correct. That evening, he doesn't make the team. His manager knows what the player must be feeling. Every player wants to play. I was in Stockton against Cork in 1988, and I was named in the subs. I didn't speak to Mick Dwyer for five years. And I was given myself 25,000 reasons why I should have started. But it took me five years to find out and to tell myself that he was right. Because I was going badly in training. But I didn't want to admit it to myself. So taking players off in games and not starting players for games and all of that, again you have the advantage of having been through it. And you'll understand how a player is feeling. So you're in a better position to be able to explain it to him.
as a togetherness about this outfit. We have the likes of Padraig there, we have Can, we have Mick Duffy, we have our medical team, we have, we have all the selectors, we have all the officers, we have our sponsors. But above all, lads, above all, now, lads, we have our own identity. What more have we got to do now, lads, only pick and beat the teams and the counties who have tradition? We are slowly but surely making our own mark in this situation. The crash was only the beginning. Waiting on the island was something far worse. What the hell was that? They know exactly where we are. No one is who they seem to be. Where are we? No one is looking for them. We're a thousand miles off course. No one can survive without the others. The top rated drama in every country it's played now See it first on RTE2, starting with a season premiere double episode. Lost, coming soon, only on RTE2. All begins with the GAA Under-21 Football Championship, proudly sponsored by Cadbury. 11, 8, 15, 15. For a fast and friendly directory inquiry service, that's great from your mobile. We text back the number for free, so you can use it again. There's only one number you need. That's 11, 8, 50. 11, 8, 50. Energize Sports Isotonic Formula rehydrates the body faster than water, fueling the passion. Be kit, be kin, be clan. Be teammates, be shipmates. Be in the same boat, be of the same mind. Be on the same side. Be arm in arm, be hand in hand. Be shoulder to shoulder. Be one of us, be one of them. Be one in a million. Be indivisible, be undivided, be united, be city, be town, be club, be a part of something strong, be long. Vermont ready to fit decking by Ron Seal. Really easy, great savings and done in a day. Vermont by Ron Seal does exactly what it says in the tin. Nice car, mate. New Astra Sport Hatch. Go drive.
Those clothes. Up with gravy. One of the, the all-time great Irish tracks. Where's me jumper? Wait a minute. Where's me jumper? Where's me jumper? Where's me jumper? What lyrics? Foster and Alan was just another one that my dad used to like, that he didn't need to learn the words to, you know. Take a musical trip down memory lane with Reverb, Tuesday at 9.30 on OTE2. I won eight All Irelands, played in 13 Munster finals, and won 11 out of the 13. Won three or, three or four national leagues, three under 21 All Irelands. So football has been extremely good to me, and the, and the reason it has is Kerry is such a great county. So many people came to me after the game against Dublin and said, "Party, this must have been a great moment for you." And I, I described it as a special moment, and it wouldn't compare with any of the wins that I had with my own county, uh, both as a player and as a manager. I'm still a Kerry man, and I'll always be a Kerry man. I'm a believer in the green and gold, and Nothing will ever change me about that. Football was first. Football came first. Before everything. But it still does in this house. All my family would have the greatest of confidence in me to do a job when I'm tuned in. At times it's, it's difficult to get me tuned in, but when I am tuned in, I'm extremely good. I can be extremely bad as well now, when I'm not tuned in. Wexford will be Westmead's opponents in the semi-final. Fellow minnows, they still deserve respect. Come on, no shortcuts, lad. A lot of people are, you know, even supporters of they're getting a bit complacent about Wexford. And uh, the way that we see it is, like Westmead have never won anything. Wexford have a great tradition. They won for all the Royal Irelands in a row. Like, they're going to be very dogged and very hard to beat. And we really have to, you know, be mentally tough. We can't be one bit complacent. bloody well thought when there was an awful lot of vultures up around October and November and December and January of last year what they were saying what they were not saying about West Meat. Fuck them now lads. They didn't crack us. They didn't suddenly crack me anyhow as I can assure you. We were giving Tuesday to you for the day of rest on one condition. Obviously you know the condition. It would be so disappointing 
that I'd throw it away for me if I thought that any player from 1 to 32 was acting the bollocks, drinking and fucking about. One fella can bring everything down. Every bloody thing that we have done up to now can be brought down because of some fucking weak guy who decides that he's above the rest. Starting tonight, we need only allow the outside world to dictate to us how, how in the manner of what we are thinking. We're in fucking deep trouble. We're in deep trouble, lads. So the steely stuff starts tonight. And there is a one bit of advice I'll give you, lads. You're like the good fucking detective. You're never off. You're never off duty. You won't be fucking off duty, lads, until this list of championship is won. Well done, lads. <laughs> Summertime in Westmeath usually includes an early exit from the championship. But this year, lifelong supporters like Mick Duffy can dare to dream. There's a bit of pride in your own county, I think, that, that, that uh, you know, you can be up there like the Kerrys and the Dublins and the Meads and the Offleys and all your neighbouring counties have had success over the last 30, 40 years. We haven't been in that limelight and you've always been wishing that, you know, would the day ever come? I know, you know, sometimes I have to pinch myself and say, are we really in this situation? You're waiting to wake up and find out that it was all a bloody dream. But it's not a dream. <laughs> it, it is reality. I'm only one fanatic in the county. There is thousands of fanatics out there. Leinster is something that we long for. Just before the Leinster final, Paddy gets a major boost. Rory O'Connell's high court action against his ban has succeeded. He can now play against Leash, the team managed by Paddy's old boss, Mick O'Dwyer. The Mick O'Dwyer factor is not going to be as difficult on this occasion for me. It was an amount of pressure on me when I was with Kelly playing Kildare. That was the last encounter. Uh, that pressure won't be there at all this time. I mean, here are we, a team that never won a Leinster Championship. Didn't play in a Leinster Championship since 1949. Playing a team who are Leinster champions. We have nothing to lose. So, maybe for a change now, the pressure might be a little bit on Miko this time to deliver. Might be no harm. He's one of the people, I suppose, that had certainly a major influence in my whole life. He knows damn well that I know him inside out, that he's the biggest rogue. And if Miko's telling you he's going to Dublin, Miko's probably going to Galway. <laughs> you know, and, he, and vice versa. When he asks me something as well, he knows quite well as well that I, I just play a half ball with him. On Sunday morning, the people of Mullingar and Athlone, Tyrrells Pass and Rochford Bridge place their faith in the team. Paddy's taking no chances. He's going straight to the top. I am very, very, very superstitious. I am extremely superstitious. I will wear the same suit next Sunday for the Leinster final that I wore for the first day against Offaly to the game, to Mass in the cathedral in Mullingar. I'd say an awful lot of people thinking I have only one suit. I was more uptight playing in my last All-Ireland than I was in my first. In what was I, 32 or 3, when I won my last All Ireland? You're questioning your fitness levels and you're saying, Jeepers, it's today the day now that I'm going to meet some young fella that's going to score two goals and five points off me. Those things will be going through your mind. But if you have the work done during the national anthem, you'll say, Well, Jesus, I won't get reddened here in Croke Park today. You have to be wired to the moon, but at the same time, you must be, you must be comfortable within yourself. When you leave the dressing room, yes, you are fired up, and very fired up, but you must be fired up in a composed way. The opportunity has at last arrived for Westmeath to end one of the longest losing runs in Irish sport. That's 
the prize this evening. Will it be going to Leash or to Westmeath for the very first time? And the 2004 Leinster Senior Football Final underway. Conway. Look at the space. The marking is just not up to it from Westmeath. Now they close down Fitzpatrick. But he goes for it. The Leash are into their stride already. This time it's been a McDonald as far as forward. McDonald has Parkinson outside. Well blocked down by Damien Healy. But it might still come for Chris Conway. Well taken. The leash captain. Dennis Glennon moving from one side to the other. Alan Mangan is through the middle. And Byrne just hasn't got the pace to go for Glennon. Glennon's still going. Point. Could so easily have been a goal. They're back to within two. seems to be picking up Glennon now O'Shocknessy has he the confidence to have a go Glennon has had a go and it hasn't been good here's Dolan to give Westmead the lead hangs an awful long time and he's done it and Westmead leads for the second time in this final Glennon is waiting inside lots of uh, support in tight and Fallon has found the gap and he's bursting through Joe Fallon for Westmead. Great tip. What a difference he's made. Joe Fallon playing very well. You wonder why he didn't start. Here's Dennis Glennon taking on Kelly. He's going to be hard to get by, but Glennon has got two for Westmead. Takes his point. Leash will know how much time they've got to get an equaliser, and they'd probably grab a draw off you at this late stage. For the replay, we won't have a winner today. It's been a super game. I'm only just hoping that I will, that these lads will be steely tough for me. Now, now that's what all these trips to down to Inchidahani, down to Ross's Point, speaking to the lads in the water and the sea water. Uh, I mean, we have our tie bar, our own little badge that we wear. Like Bola Darle Dorlev. You know, they're trying to beat Westmeath, it's trying to beat your hand off, 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 off an oak tree. I mean, that big time comes into play next Saturday evening now. That comes into play big time. Most people think Westmeath have missed the boat. Pawdy has five days to make the team believe again. I'd like to think that I, I'm pretty handy getting inside people's heads. Uh, I, I, I must say that I, I particularly enjoy working with these bunch of lads. It would be more difficult with Kerry because they have tasted success very, very frequently. But for a team like Westmead who haven't, they're willing to go the extra mile for you, the extra yard for you. We are going well, lads. But lads, bring the bit of fucking development into your play the next day on the Tigerish play. The discipline, the tightness, the, 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 the rough and tumble stuff all around the middle of the field, the fucking breaking ball, a, a, a grain of rice is going to tip the scale. Just remember that, lads. A grain of rice will tip the scale. But you'll have to get steely tough upstairs, and you must be willing to fucking break your gut. Well, you were fucked over the line twice. Fucked over the line like you'd catch a fucking loaf of bread and fucked you over the line with his shorts up. And what that does is, it lifts the opposition. We don't want to see no West Meat man fucked about. Is that clear now, Alan? No more. You'll have to be closer. Closer to fuck. We'll have to fucking crash into these fellas and test out their fucking pulse. Because I'm telling you, lads, these fellas will play good football if they're allowed. Give me one fucking guarantee, each and every one of you, that you're going to be tighter, that you're going to be more disciplined, that you're going to be more tigerish, and that you're going to take the fucking game to these fellas. 
that these fellas will get such a fucking shell shock next Saturday evening that we'll put them back in their fucking asses for fucking 10 years. All right, then. It's Leash and Westmeath, Pawdy against Mikkel. Phase two, and we're underway. Tom Kelly. Here's Munnerley, he's made up a lot of ground. Into low Garvin, Garvin off to Tom Kelly. Kelly looking for the first point and getting it. Uh, the big way too tight. Parkinson, Gary Cavanagh couldn't hang on. Here's Brennan. Oh, he's caught it beautifully. Loose cruising in the early stages. Oh dear, oh dear. They've gone 22 minutes, as you can see, in this Leinster final replay without a single point. If you work so fucking hard to get it, and then we get it away, so fucking easy. Alan Mangan. Mangan gets turned. And there we go, the first point for Westmead after 23 minutes of the game. Glennon's got some space, but a long way out. Glennon goes round Rooney, and Glennon has got it. That's a really good point. Decided to have a go. And that's a fantastic point from Westmead. Now lead for the first time. Brian Morley, he's got inside to O'Shaughnessy. His midfield has oh, it. Now inside to Brian Morley. Is there a goal here for Westmead? He takes the point. Certainly not showing any signs of nerves at the moment, Westmead. They lead by five against the reigning Leicester champions. Dolan. And has he got it? The crowd behind absolutely love it. And it hasn't gone over the bar. Maybe it'll go in the back of the net from Mangan. He's fisted it over. Mangan with his third point, and perhaps the most important of all. Now there's no foul here. Donald O'Donoghue to Alan Mangan. Mangan in the clear. Can he convert? Yes, he can. Alan Mangan with his fourth point of the game. They've all been from play. Here come Leash, they will have opportunities, they will have a lot to say. They're the reigning Leinster champions, Kevin Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick looking to respond straight away, doing it all himself, Fitzpatrick. And that's a very good point for Kevin Fitzpatrick, it's his second. Dina McDonald getting away from Healy is an opportunity for McDonald. Oh, just about takes it. Here's Dina McDonald, is there a chance here? A chance for Leash! Oh! Oh, unbelievable. That was the drawing of the game, and he put it wide. Down here in front of us, the Westmead supporters are coming onto the park. It's over for the for very first time. Westmead are Leinster senior football champions. They have made history. Tony O'Shea has led them to the promised land, and this is an unbelievable night for Westmead football, for the county of Westmead, and for Tony O'Shea. Mm -hmm. From my heart, listen up, hope that everything that you have done and everything that we have asked you to do. Up to now, up to we lifting that canister. You have done it. And that's the reason that, that we have that bio here. That's the reason we have that bio here. You are now the ambassadors, not just of your own county, but of, of all of Ireland. You have a major duty in that young boys and girls and young families will be looking up to the Westmeath football team. And we'll direct those youngsters in the right direction. And it will be a while again before we'll be waiting fucking how many years it was the start of the year. So <laughs> and listen, lads. <laughs> listen, lads. It takes a good man to take his beating. But it takes a better man who's the winner to keep it inside and to, to hold his head. And so it is. Just. Like you said it would be 
Life goes easy on me Most of the time And so it is Just like you said it should be We'll both forget the breeze Most of the time And so it is The shorter story No glory No hero in her sky I can't take my eyes off of you I can't take my eyes off of you Can't take my eyes off of you. I can't take my eyes off of you. I can't take my eyes off of you. I can't take my eyes.